हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल इजी प्रोग्रामिंग आई एम नवीन मिश्रा एंड आई कंटिन्यू टीचिंग यू हाउ टू राइट प्रोग्राम्स इन जावा लैंग्वेज इन माई प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैव एक्सप्लेन द टॉपिक्स ऑफ की वर्ड्स कॉन्स्टेंट्स डेटा टाइप्स इन सी लैंग इन इन जावा लैंग्वेज इन दिस वीडियो टूटोरियल वी विल कवर यूजर इनपुट हाउ टू टेक द इनपुट फ्रॉम यूजर एंड ऑपरेटर्स इन जावा प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज बिफोर आई स्टार्ट दिस वीडियो I will suggest you guys to please subscribe and share to my channel. Okay, let's start with this video. So, reading input from the user, just like in C and C plus plus, where we use scanf function in C language, we use scanf function to read the input. In C plus plus language, we use C in uh, to read the input from the user. Similar in the same way, you can read the input from the uh, user in Java as well. For this purpose, you have to import a package. In C, C++, we use hash include, but here we will use import. So we'll say, write this import statement before the start of class. So before the start of class, I will write an import statement followed by the Java. This is the package name. Dot util sub package. Dot followed by the class name. You can sp say star. Star means all the classes of the util package are imported, or you can be specific of a scanner class only. so you can either write this line or either write this line this line will include all the classes whereas this line will only include scanner class okay so after after implementing this the next next step is to create the object of scanner class so how will you do that scanner object name equals to new scanner name in c++ we used to uh, create the object of scanner like a space a1 simply if class name is a then we just create the object a space a1 but in java everything every new allocation will be done using the new operator so the way the objects created in the java language is scanner class name followed by object name equals to new to allocate memory then scanner that is the constructor followed by the system dot in as we use system dot out for output we use system dot in for input okay after that uh, this is the syntax and this is the example once you do that you can assess the members of scanner class using the dot operator the same way we use we do in c, in uh, c++ okay so how will you, how will we call the appropriate method and what are the data types so these are the list so these are the data types available in java integer float string char double boolean and for every data type there is a separate method name next int for integer next float for float value now you have to make sure that integers i and float f is capital because it is a two letter it is a two letter method name so the first letter method name will be in smalls whereas the second letter uh, second name must start with initial in capitals okay so next int next float next float is there to read the string you can use next line or you can just write next to read the character there is no specific s1 dot character at method but we can call a uh, string uh, string library method char at 0 so let's say here is the word that i have inserted now this s1 dot next line dot char at 0 will pick the zeroth character that is h and store it in char and similarly next double and next boolean methods are there let's try to write the program first So I will use the Sublime editor, and I will start a new file. Let's command the program. Program to read the input from the user. The first thing is, is to import the package. Uh, before do that, uh, before reading the value from the user, let's try to implement a simple program. So I will start with a class average. then the main function so public is the assess specifier static void return type main function name string is the class args arguments array empty array i will declare the variable abc comma average then i'll say a equals to 10 b equals to 20 c equals to 30 so this step is called initialization once i do that i will implement my formula so average is equals to a plus b plus c upon 3 then i will print the values of our 
so value of a equals to plus a system dot out dot just a second dot print ln value of b equals to plus b let's save this program first so just a second here okay i will create class average dot java okay and yeah right so let's continue system dot out dot print ln value of c equals to system dot out dot print ln sum of a comma b and c equals to plus a v g let's save this file and op open this location open containing folder so this is a location uh, there are two average classes just a second did i made a mistake yeah okay okay just a second i will rename this save as average dot java then i have to delete this file okay just a second yeah and to execute my program i will press shift then right click then choose the option open powershell window here i will compile my program like java c for compilation class name that is average followed by dot java so if there is an error the error will be shown here or if i move to the next line then my program is successfully compiled which creates a dot class file now i'll say java average so there you go this is the output now what i want is i want the values to be written here and whatever values are written here these values are used in the formula of average so let's read the input from the user the first step is import statement import java dot util dot star then in the main function i will create the object scanner s1 new scanner system dot in that is object created step 3 now i will change this thing i will say a equals to s1 dot next int b is equals to s1 dot next int and c is equals to s1 dot next int and i will give a message to the user to enter three values enter three values of which average is to be calculated okay i think it should work <coughs> i have saved my program let's compile again you can use the up keys to get the previous command so up and down keys i can get the previous commands okay so this is the command that i want to get executed program compiled successfully let's run, let's run this file average there you go 11 22 33 and i get the average like so sorry the message is wrong here so i will say average and i will recompile my file and execute the program again okay but there is a possibility that during the calculation of average the answer comes in float so i will change my data type to float or double if i'm using double then here next int if you select if you after selecting the text if you press control d the similar uh, characters will be selected and at the same time you can change all these at once so this is a very useful feature of sublime once you do that you can press the escape key okay and let's see what is the difference 11 22 33 okay so 22.0 that is correct now let's give some fraction part values and this is the fraction answer that i that is expected so for the double or the float i can use s1 dot next double or next float okay now oh, let's write one more program to read all the user information so that we can use all the methods okay so first of all roll number 
integer then string name and address then double marks then care gender then boolean uh, status let's say marriage status okay and then i'll read value one by one system order print ln enter your name so s1 dot name equals to s1 dot next line then again i will say enter your address and for address again i will use the next line then again paste and i'll say enter your roll number and here i'll say roll number equals to s1 dot next int okay and then for double i'll say enter your marks and i can say marks equals to s1 dot next double to read the gender i'll say choose your gender m for male comma f for female for this i'll use dot caret zero and name i will change this name to gender then again i'll paste it and i'll say enter your martial status for married true for unmarried false so i'll say s1 dot next boolean then let's display this information system dot out dot print ln student details uh, let's design some design the output i can do that okay then i'll say system dot out dot print ln roll number slash t name slash t address slash t marks slash t gender slash t martial status and then i'll say system dot out dot print ln first is roll number then slash t then name then slash t then address again slash t then marks then again slash t gender slash t and marriage status okay let's hope everything goes according to our plan i will change it to data types all and let's compile and run my form first of all clear the screen java c data types all dot java okay for boolean it will it work let me see mm -hmm. the boolean is not working oh just a second i made a mistake here marriage status yeah it works now so let's execute the program name to address new jersey roll number marks okay 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 uh that this is a problem because of s1 dot next line i have to place an extra s1 dot next line because after reading integer or double 
the next next line doesn't work okay so let's try to do this again now recompile the program run the program do uh, new jersey roll number marks gender martial status there you go so this information is displayed like roll number name address marks gender true martial status okay so this is the program of data types okay i hope you guys have understood the concept now let's start with the next topic that is to operators so what are operators in java uh in the c language video tutorial i have explained this topic so i'll just have a quick go through about this so these are the special symbols that tell the compiler about the operation to be performed so plus minus multiply divide less than greater than any symbol that you guys that you guys are using is an operator every operator needs some kind of values and these values are called operand that is a plus b so a and b are your operand and plus is your operator based on how many operands you are passing there are three types of operators unary binary and ternary if you are passing only one operand then it is unary if you are passing two operand then it is binary if you are passing three operand then it is ternary okay these are the examples then there are generally there are eight types of operators in java so let's start with these first of all arithmetic operators you guys have you guys must have known about this plus minus multiply divide are there uh, there is a new operator modulus that you guys might not have studied if you are if you guys are relatively new in this programming line so mod is there for you guys to use so these are the values 10 and 3 if you plus them minus them multiply them divide them these are the results but if you use this percentage sign then the remainder will be fetched so 10 mod 3 will return 1 as a remainder then followed by the relational operators these are used to compare two or more values so less than less than equals to greater than greater than equals to are there these double equals to and not equals to are used to compare the two values that these values are same or not so a double equals to b that both values are same then it will return true and if a not equals to b then it will return the false then logical operators to combine two or more conditions into one you can use and operator or operator and not operator and operator says that both the conditions must result in true only then this block will be executed or condition says any one of these conditions must be true then this block will be executed and not complements the result that is if this condition is resulting true it will be converted into false okay so after logical operators there are bitwise operators now there are some new operators here in java that you guys might not have studied earlier and or no do you guys must have known that this is this is this is all done in c programming tutorials but still let's have a quick go through when i say a equals to 40 and b equals to 30 they will be converted into binary and then the data will be stored right now integer takes 4 bytes of memory so 4 bytes of int equals to 4 multiplied by 8 that is 32 bits now 40 and 30 will be converted into binary in this way there is a technique to convert the uh, decimal value to binary value you can use this code 8421 so you start with 1 then multiply the one with 2 1 into 2 2 then again 2 multiply by 2 4 4 four multiply to 8 8 multiply to 16 multiply to 32 and you can go on for the larger numbers now the number is 40 right now you will see which numbers you will add and will get the result of 40 So 64 is too large. You will not think of it. 32. Now 32 plus 8 results 40, right? So the numbers that you you are using to add will set to one, and the other numbers which are not which have not been used will be set to zero. Like 16, 4, 2, 1. So this is the binary conversion of 40. The numbers in black. And for 30 again, 32 is too much. Then 16 plus 8, 24. 24 plus 4, 28. 28 plus 2, 30. so these numbers have corresponding one and the numbers which are not used like 1 and 32 will set to zero okay now these numbers 40 and 30 are using only six bits what about the remaining 
26 bits because 32 bits is allotted to these variables out of which your values only using 6 bits. Now the Java rule says that if the number is positive then all the remaining bits will be set to 0 and if the number is negative then all the remaining bits will be set to 1. So here because 40 and 30 are the negative positive numbers that's why the remaining bits will be set to 0. You can go on and on like 256 then 512, 1024, 2048 right. You can go on, go on and on but I think that is enough required to explain the concept that I want to explain okay. So now and or note I you guys must have known that or otherwise I will write a program for you guys to uh, teach you how these things are working. These are the new operators shift left shift right and a new operator shift right with zero fill. Now let's try to work on that. So let's say my a value is 40 and I implement this thing a shift left by one bit and then I'm using one. Now here the one says that how many number of times I want to shift my value. And whatever the result is produced, I want to store it in C. So let's see how it works. If I do this, int a equals to 40, int c equals to then, then shift left by one bit for one time. So what will happen is this zero will be moved to here, this zero will be moved to here. All these numbers are shifted to the right, okay. And the next new zero is filled. So this is the new result, okay. Uh, uh, don't consider this 40. This is a mistake. But this is the result. So if you do this, a is equals to 40. So this is the 40 conversion, right? And when you say a shift left by one, then all the bits will be shifted to left side and zero is filled at the first place. So it will, if you add these values, 64 plus 16, these corresponding ones, 64 plus 16 is equals to 80. So it results in 80. In short, the logical concept is this, the things working on in the background is like this. But in short, you can do a trick. So 40 shift left generally multiplies the given number by 2. So 40, 40 multiplied by 2 equals to 80. Simple as that. You don't have to worry about this concept. Okay. Now if I use the reverse arrow like this a shift right by one bit, then the numbers will be divided by 2. So the numbers will be shift to right. Now this 10100 will move to the next slide. This 0 will be deleted and these numbers will move to a right. And then if you add these values like 16 plus 4 equals to 20, so 20 will be the result. In short, you can divide by your 40 by 2, so 40 divided by 2 equals to 20. Okay, so these are the shift left and shift right operators. Okay. Now there is a new operator in Java that was not available in C++ that is shift right with zero fill. Now let's say I place a value a equals to minus 1. Now if you convert the 1 into binary, then it is a 1 simple one. So this is the simple one, right? And when all the minus, minus means all the remaining, bit, remaining bits will be set to 1. So these all are 1. This one is used, just a second. This one is used to convert this binary value here and all the remaining bits like these will be set to 1 as these are the negative numbers, okay. Now I say shift right with 24 times. So when these values will shift, all the empty blocks will be set to 0. So all these bits are moved to right and these 1 are also placed with 0, okay. So out of 32, 24 is set to 0. Since 24 bits are set to 0, the number is converted from negative to positive. Okay, and all these remaining ones will be evaluated. That is 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. That will result in 255. So the answer will be 255. Okay, so these are the shift operators and how they work in Java. So this is the new operator for you guys. Okay, let's move forward. Increment and decrement operator. You guys know that simply a plus plus will increment the given value by 1, a minus 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 will decrement the given value by 1, okay. And you can say a minus minus or minus minus a based on this they can be termed as post decrement or pre decrement and post increment or pre increment, okay. Then comes the assignment operator. These are used to short shorthand the programming task that is you the task of typing is reduced. So. Let's say you have a equals to 10 
if you want to add 3 in it, you will say a equals to a plus 3. Now, assignment operator says that you don't have to write a twice. You can use this line a plus equals to 3 and it will do the same task as of a equals to a plus 3. Uh, just a second. So, what I'm trying to say is if you want to add 3 in it, then you will say a equals to a plus 3. But assignment operator says that you can do this a plus equals to 3. There is no difference between this line and this line. The best you get is you don't have to write this a twice. You will only write this only once. So I have given you the example of plus all the arithmetic operators. You can use these symbols. Okay. I hope you guys have understood it and let's move on to the next slide. Ternary operators. To compare two or more two values and produce the result based on the condition, you can use the ternary operator. So this is a ternary operator. Just a second. So this is the ternary operator. What will happen is first of all this condition is tested. It can produce two values, either true or false. If true, then question mark a value will be followed and passed to C. And if this condition is false, then colon value will be followed and value of B will be passed to C. In both cases, the greatest value is passed and it will be stored in C and you can print the greatest using this. Okay. Then the special operators, comma and dot operator, so comma operator you can use to combine the similar statements into one like int a semicolon, int b semicolon, you can say int a comma b. Then dot operator is used to assess the members of a class like s1 dot next int, right? So dot operator is used. Instance of is the new operator in Java which tells you the object belongs to which class, okay? So points to the class of which the object is created. So these are the operators that are available in Java, okay? Uh, that's it from this video. I think, or should I write a program? Just a second. Let's write a program of this so th that you guys can understand it better. I will only write the program of binary operators. Okay. Because rest are same or we will do it a lot in our work. So let's understand this binary. So int a comma b comma c variables are used. I will ask the value of a and b from the user enter values of a and b a equals to s1 dot next int b equals to s1 dot next int then i'll say c is equals to a and b so system dot out dot println bitwise and results in plus c let's save this file bitwise dot java so just a second bitwise save open containing folder then shift plus right click open powershell window here then i'll say java c bitwise dot java and java bitwise so i put the values 40 and 30 and the result is 8 how the result is 8 uh, I'll just I'll show you how just a second so you see here these values here this is the conversion of 40 and this is the conversion of 30 and operator will say if both values are 1 then result is 1 otherwise 0 so based on this result what will happen is this will this will result to 0 this will result to 0 this will result to 1 this will result to 0, this will result to 0, and this will result to 0. So when you convert it back into decimal, you will only use this value 1. So the number is 8. So the result is, the result you get is 8. Okay. So the result you get is 8. Okay. So we can continue further. I will copy these 12 and 13 line and change the operator to or. Okay. 
and I'll say bitwise or will result in C let's see this I have to recompile the program run the program again 40 and 30 and you get the number 62 and again the or says that both one then one so the or will result in like this thing so any one then one so one 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 and zero here so you can add 32 <coughs> plus 16 48 plus 8 56 plus 460 plus 462 so the result will be 62 okay <coughs> the further operators are c is equals to a shift right one c equals to a shift left one <coughs> Sorry for that. <coughs> bitwise shift right, bitwise shift left. <coughs> I'm using it for A, so rest is same. Then I will set a value int z equals to minus one, and I'll say uh, c equals to z shift right 24 times. And then again, we'll print this line. Let's see what is the result. Uh, just a second. Shift plus right click. Open PowerShell window here. Java C. Bitwise dot Java. <coughs> Java bitwise. 1430 are the values. And there you go. These are the results. Okay. Shift left. The answer is 40. 40 divided by 220. 40 multiplied by 280 and the 250 result as I have explained you in the slide. So I think that's enough from this video. I hope you guys have understood the topic. We'll see you in the next video of the decision making statements and loopings. Till then, be safe and enjoy yourself. See you in the next video. Cheers.